There are few players in National Hockey League history that I can remember that have stirred as much debate as Eric Lindros. That debate started before he hit the NHL. Now, this wasn't Eric's fault to begin with, because I know there's people are going to go, oh, it's Eric's fault. It wasn't his fault to begin with. So, Eric Lindros uh, said right out of the gate, I don't want to play for Quebec. And this is while everybody's talking about us being the next one. So we had Wayne Gretzky, the great one, 99. Mario Lemieux, the magnificent one, 66. And this Lindros kid wears 88. So double numbers, it's got to be a hit. And he he was great. He was. He'd go to World Juniors, and he, he was a man playing among boys. And physically, he was ready for the game. He was a big hitter. He could score goals. He got a ton of points. And I totally understood why he got the next one uh, uh, moniker. And he wasn't seen as being a guy who would produce points like Gretzky or Lemieux, but he was seen as a guy who would score 100-plus points every year and could physically dish it out and play the game that, that the game had evolved to, where it's, you, you kind of had to be the bigger player, you had to kind of be physical, and that would, of course, continue. And that kind of play would actually shorten Eric's career. But when he goes to the draft in 91, Quebec Nordiques have been told for a long time, look, Eric's not going to play there. The Quebec Nordiques could have swapped picks with New Jersey. And New Jersey Devils could have selected the the Eric Lindros saga for themselves. And Quebec could have had Scott Niedermeyer. Scott Niedermeyer, I can't see any reason he would have refused to report to Quebec. Quebec was run badly. Quebec was run really badly. And it, it really came out because, A, they were they drafted him anyways, knowing he wasn't going to play for them. He didn't put the jersey on. He looked miserable that day. Like, I don't, I'm not playing for you guys. Probably realizing as he sat down at the draft table, great, now I've been drafted by a team I'm not going to play for. I'm going to be the bad guy here. And I don't know when I'm going to start playing in the NHL. So he flat out refused to play for them. And for the next year, that was the storyline while he kept playing hockey and kept being dominant anywhere he went, whether it was at the Olympics, whether it was in junior hockey, wherever it was, it was clear he needed to be in the National Hockey League. So they finally decide, okay, we're we're going to trade him. Because you kind of have to. So June of 1992 rolls around, and Quebec does the most Quebec thing that Quebec could do, and they traded him twice. You know, I, I've gone over the articles today on this, and I still don't know how you deal a guy twice. I don't understand how this happens i don't get how it happens and you're dealing them to two teams in the east and you're in the east and it, it doesn't it doesn't work it doesn't make sense but it's the most quebec thing you can do we, we traded him wait but we traded him uh, i don't know we traded him twice ah, ha, ha. and i think the plan was they were just going to have a whole new team so here were the offers so the one that they end up taking from Philadelphia is Steve Duchesne, Kerry Huffman. So Steve Duchesne, a top four defenseman. Kerry Huffman, a top six defenseman. Ron Hextall, starter. They needed that. Mike Ricci, good young forward. They needed that. 25th overall pick, which became Chris Simon. Physical player who, yes, became very controversial in his own right. Two first round picks. One of them ends up getting moved and, and it doesn't become really a big deal. The other one became Jocelyn Antibo. Well, Jocelyn Antibo becomes part of the, the package that Colorado would trade to, to get Patrick Waugh. And some guy named Peter Forsberg, oh, and they threw in $15 million. It's like Dr. Evil made the made the trade. And $15 million. Really? Seriously? You're going to tack that on? Now, over their careers, you could argue Lindros for Forsberg, eh, it's a fair trade. You might be able to argue Lindros over Forsberg in certain situations, but honestly, you can't make the argument that one is that much higher than the other. So Lindros goes for that. But what were the Rangers offering? Well, the Rangers offer was Sergei Nemchinov, Tony Amonti, one of the one of the best young forwards in the game at the time, Alexei Kovalov, same thing, uh, James Patrick, good defenseman, and either John Van Beesbrook or Mike Richter. Okay, Ranger fans, just imagine, you guys get Lindros, the next one's with your team, you traded Richter, do you win the Stanley Cup in 94? That happens to the Rangers in 94. Uh, and, oh, a multiple first-round draft picks, apparently, and $20 million. So those were the trades, 
and they 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 end up being they end up sitting down with an arbitrator who I'm sure goes wait all right explain this to me again you traded him twice. Do members of your organization not talk to one another? And you wondered why he didn't want to go and play for you. Right? I I think the whole thing bore out why Lindros didn't want to play for, for Quebec. And, and it wasn't really a, I don't want to play in Quebec City. It was, I don't like this. or This organization is a no for me. So he goes to Philadelphia. 92-93, 61 games played, 41 goals, 34 assists, 75 points. Right out of the gate, very, very good. Misses significant time, and most years in his career, he does. 65 games played the following year, 44 goals, 53 assists, 97 points. He is on his way. And Eric Lindros' hockey cards, as hot as they were before he reached the NHL, they they actually you know became more and more popular those first couple of years because now we see him in the National Hockey League. He's excellent. He's just got to stay healthy. That's it. 94-95, arguably his best season. And he ties for the scoring lead with Yermer Yager that year. It's a lockout shortened season. 46 games played by Eric Lindros. 29 goals, 41 assists, 70 points. He's tied for first with Yermer Yager. Yager wins the scoring title because he has more goals. Goals is the tiebreaker. 32 goals, 38 assists, 70 points. 48 games. Lindros, Ontario-born kid, tied for the scoring lead with a guy from the Czech Republic. Cue Don Cherry, who lost his mind at the idea that Lindros plays two less games than Yager. Lindros clearly should have been declared the Art Ross winner. Goals, that's silly. They should go by points per game. And he was on that for a while that year. I remember. Now, that was the year that, that Lindros debuts in the playoffs. 12 games, 4 goals, 11 assists, 15 points. He's a first-team All-Star that year. Not only that, he wins the Hart Trophy. He wins what is then the Lester B. Pearson Trophy, which is now the Ted Lindsay Award. And, yeah, this is this is his year. This is it. Eric Lindros has arrived. 95-96 takes place. 73 games played, 47 goals, 68 assists, 115 points. So he's ninth in goals, ninth in assists, sixth in overall points, a year after being tied for first in points in the NHL. Like I said, he has arrived. 12 games played in the playoffs, six goals, six assists, 12 points, and he's the second team all-star in the NHL. And that's where being healthy and being 100% ends. For Lindros, that's where that storyline ends. 52 games played the following season. 32 goals, 47 assists, 79 points. And then in the playoffs, going to the Stanley Cup Finals, where they don't end up... I, I, they got swept in the Stanley Cup Finals uh, by Detroit. Uh, yeah, 19 games, 12 goals, 14 assists, 26 points. Lindros very, very well... Uh, uh, um, or Lindros playing very, very well. And that's with LeClaire and Renberg, of course, and the Legion of Doom line and all the wonderfulness that that brought and being the, the, the most feared line in hockey... But ultimately, the goal is winning the Stanley Cup. And they they fall short. But again, he's got a Hart Trophy. Lindsay tied for the league lead in scoring. And then in 97, he goes to the Stanley Cup Finals. Everything still looks pretty pretty bright for him overall. Uh, it, it, you know, but the injuries are a problem. And they continue in 97, 98. 63 games played. 30 goals, 41 assists, 71 points. And it's affecting his game. And these are concussions, and this is why when we look at concussion spotters now and all the talk of concussions and how big a deal concussions are, it, it is his career, which is the, I, I think it's the greatest example, and you could argue Korea as well, greatest example of a career that was really cut short. We didn't get to see very much of this Eric Lindros because the concussions just piled up and concussions weren't seen as being a big deal. Uh, and it wasn't seen as a big deal by their trainer. It wasn't seen as a big deal by Bobby Clark, Ed Snyder. They were old-fashioned. Uh, just, just patch them up, send them back out on the ice. And so 97-98 uh, takes place. In 98-99, he plays a few more games, 71 games. And his scoring gets better. 40 goals, which was 7th. 56 assists, which was 6th. 93 points, which is 7th overall in the NHL. So things look like they're getting better. It's 99-2000 where things finally break. The battles between Bobby Clark and Eric Lindros, or between Bobby Clark and Eric Lindros's parents, depending on who you listen to on this, um, basically being, you know, if Eric could stop listening to his parents, I can get him on a plane and he can die. That's kind of the idea behind all this. 
Uh, well, Bobby Clark said he wasn't trying to kill him by putting him on a plane, but eh. Uh, 55 games played in 99-2000, 27 goals, 32 assists, 59 points. And in the playoffs, he played two games, had one goal, and that's when Scott Stevens decided to absolutely drill him into the middle of, well, the uh, 2001-2002 season. Now, I'm going to read you guys uh, from an article in uh, the Inquirer, the Philadelphia Inquirer, uh, June 7th, 2000, written by uh, Frank Fitzpatrick. Uh, when Keith Jones awoke between 6.45 and 7 in the morning on April 2nd, 1999. So April 2nd, 1999 is right in here. And this is the day where the relationship between Lindros and the Flyers is seen to have broken. And though he plays the following season, it's not a good experience. Uh, he's shocked at how fl fl Flyer Center, Eric Lindros' condition had deteriorated overnight. His roommate lay pale and gasping in a bathtub of warm water in their Nashville hotel room. Something was seriously wrong, far beyond the rib bruise, that team trainer John Worley had found after Lindros complained of chest pain during a game uh, with the Predators the previous night. In fact, so much blood was seeping into Lindros' chest cavity, three liters in all, that his lung would eventually collapse. This is a collapsed lung. Uh, Jones called Worley, but another three hours would elapse before Lindros, before, uh, Lindros was admitted to nearby Baptist Hospital at 9.44 a.m. By then, uh, Eric's critical condition was obvious. His father and agent, Carl, later wrote team chairman to Ed Snyder. It is not a great idea to have your dad as your agent. Just throwing that out there. Uh, he was in shock, sweating, skin color as white as a sheet, and his the resting pulse was almost twice its normal rate. So poor was this condition that emergency room doctors immediately administered oxygen and conducted surgery on the spot. The treatment rendered by Worley, or the lack of it, in those three hours in Nashville caused the already heated relationship between Lindros, his family, and the Flyers to reach the boiling point. Uh, the increasingly pug public disagreement culminated Monday in general manager Bobby Clark's assertion that Lindros' parents uh, believed he had been trying to kill their son, an, al an al allegation Clark hotly denied. Which, is, it's true. Uh, I, I don't think Bobby Clark was trying to kill his best player. But there was, there was definitely a, a broken relationship with the team, and that's where it felt like it broke for good. So he misses a bunch of games during 99-2000 after that incident, and it just felt like it was just broken. So he doesn't play at all in 2000-2001 for two reasons. Post-concussion, and if you've seen the hit by Stevens on Lindros, that's, that'll do it, and a contract dispute. And then he just demands a trade. He flat out says, I'm, I'm done with the Rangers, I want out. Or I'm done with the Flyers, I want out. And so they start talking to the Rangers, who they'd originally fought for the rights to get him and now here's bobby clark going okay take him so the rangers get him for a little bit cheaper than it would have been in 92 uh, august 20th 2001 he's traded for jan holvach uh kim jonson pavel brendel and a 2003 third round draft pick so that's that's a a, a pretty good uh haul i i guess uh, it, but it's still, you know, Jan Hlavac was a youngish player. Pavel Brendel was a young prospect that maybe Philadelphia felt they could they could get his career on the right track. Janssen was a decent draft pick, or decent draft pick, decent defenseman, and a 2003 third thrown in. But it's a little bit less than what the Rangers would have had to give up to Quebec years earlier to get him. So he starts playing for the Rangers 0-1-0-2. He plays 72 games, but he's not the same player. 37 goals, ninth overall in the NHL. 36 assists and 73 points. So the overall numbers are are down, and he's not the same guy. And then 2002-2003 plays 81 games, which is a career high. 19 goals, 34 assists, 53 points. But that is the last full season he's going to play in the NHL. Again, the, the concussions. And by today's standards, there's no way Lindros is on the ice for a lot of these games. There's no chance. But we don't have concussion spotters, and concussions are still not being treated as seriously as they should be. Uh, 39 games in 2003-2004, 10 goals, 22 assists, 32 points. Lindros is one of those guys that you look at the the loss of uh, of a season in 04-05 and think, well, maybe that can help lengthen his career. He has a year off, he can rest, he can relax. So his contract expires, he goes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, plays 33 games in Toronto, 11 goals, 11 assists, 22 points. I felt bad for Lindros in Toronto because I think 
There was a lot of hope, and I understood it from Toronto's aspect, that they, there was a lot of hope that Lindros could resurrect his career in Toronto and him wearing a Leafs jersey and, you know, uh, being a good old Canadian boy and we can get this done. Uh, I felt bad for him because he wasn't going to live up to any of that expectation. It just wasn't going to happen. So his career uh, uh, ends with a one-year contract in Dallas. He only plays 49 games, five goals, 21 assists, 26 points. Nowhere near. Absolute shadow of the player that he had been for the Flyers in the mid-90s. Uh, it was it was shocking just how the, the, the concussions and all of the injuries uh, piled up on him, and it, it led to this. Uh, now, in the playoffs, he played three games for Dallas, uh, no points, and he retires November 8th of that year. So he kind of went out with a whimper. 760 games played, 372 goals, 493 assists, 865 points. In the playoffs, he played 53 games in his career, 24 goals, 33 assists, 57 points. Now, the interesting thing for me is uh, Lindros. Did he belong in the Hall of Fame? And that was a, that was immediately the conversation when he retires. Okay, so that's the end of his career. Does he go to the Hall of Fame? And there was a split down the middle. Uh, I I, I want to say it was 50-50 in most people that I was talking to as to whether or not he belonged in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and and I was, I was kind of leaning towards no. I was kind of leaning towards the, you know, he had a great start to his career, but it wasn't that long that he was at that elite level. So, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards no. He he did for me. He didn't play enough, or he didn't. He wasn't dominant long enough. But he does reach the Hall of Fame in 2016. So he did not get in on first ballot. He didn't get in right away, but he does get in. Now, the 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 Hart Trophy, the Lester B. Pearson Trophy helps. If you win the Hart Trophy, you have an excellent chance of making the Hall of Fame. Very good chance of making the Hall of Fame. Uh, and January 18th, 2018. The Philadelphia Flyers mend their fences, and number 88 is retired by the Philadelphia Flyers. And he's 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 been employed by the Flyers as as an ambassador. So there's there's something to be said for the Philadelphia organization saying we need to make peace with this player, who was a huge part of this franchise for around a decade, almost a decade. But it was it was a turbulent time in the NHL. It was a very turbulent time, and. Uh, you know, that trade, that trade absolutely set up the Quebec Nordiques so that when they went to Colorado, they could make the Patrick Waugh deal and they win a Stanley Cup. Without Eric Lindros being drafted first overall by Quebec, maybe Colorado doesn't win a Stanley Cup. Maybe maybe they're not even contenders. Because that's the thing, right going back to the start of this one, I said, you know, they could have traded down and just drafted Scott Niedermeyer they don't end up getting all of this if they draft Scott Niedermeyer. So, again, as ridiculously bad as they look for trading the same guy twice in a day and as inept as their management might have looked, they end up and, and end up with a, with a team that, that contends and then moves to Denver where they win a championship. And a lot of that can be attributed to Eric Lindros, who, if he'd won a Stanley Cup in 97, I think would have strengthened his place as a hall of famer he probably would have made it before 2016 but there you go let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video thank you guys so much for all your support remember in this time stay home if you can stay safe as often as possible and as much as possible remember to keep your hands nice and clean and hey thank you guys so much for everything i will talk to you again soon